Basics is a proud collaboration between Sony Malaysia, Z, and Lens Library. Have you ever found it cool how movies are also called motion pictures? It's such a fitting name because video really is just a series of images being shown one after another. Do it fast enough and it appears like you've got this magical moving image. The videos we watch typically have frame rates between 24 and 60 frames per second. But when we shoot more frames than we need, we're blessed with the ability to pull off this little trick you and I know as slow motion. Here's how that works. Say you're making a video that will be shown in 24 frames per second. On the camera, you record a one second clip in 120 frames per second. And because our final video can only show 24 frames every second, it would take five seconds to show every single one of those 120 frames. That means the video is going to look five times slower than real time. That's how slow motion works. But a quick piece of advice, with the exception of shooting a clip at a higher frame rate that will be used for slow motion, you should avoid mixing together different clips of different frame rates within the same video. That often means deciding on what frame rates to use before you even begin shooting and sticking strictly to that setting throughout the entire shoot. This is to avoid technical issues in editing, where your video might play back with skipped frames or play back at a different speed, causing it to drift out of sync with the audio track. But if slow motion is indeed what you're after, there are two ways you can do it on alpha cameras. You can shoot natively at a high frame rate in camera, then in post-production manually slow the high frame rate footage down in your editing software. Alternatively, it's also possible to get your slow motion done entirely in camera by using the SNQ mode. One key difference between these two methods is your footage will be recorded without sound if you're using SNQ mode. But using the SNQ mode is sometimes necessary because some of the fastest frame rates on your camera could be hidden away in SNQ mode. S and Q stands for slow and quick. You do have to set it up in the menu under S and Q settings. The S and Q frame rate setting is what frame rates your camera sees the world in. You want to set this to as high as possible if you want maximum slow motion. The S and Q record frame rate is what frame rates the final video is going to be saved as. The camera will also helpfully show you how much slow motion is your combination of frame rates going to give you. And while Z was busy running his mouth, I had to set up everything myself for our slow motion shot. I chose the two alpha camera the most suitable for slow motion work, the A7S3 and the FX3. I have the 51.2G Master on A7S3 and the 135 G Master on the FS3 for some tighter shot. I also have the 24G Master on standby if I need something wide. Well, the reason these two are the go-to cameras for slow motion is because they can record 120 frames per second in Ultra HD 4K with full autofocus functionality. But if you're using something like an A7C, you can actually do 120 FPS slow motion as well, just using the SNQ mode recording in full HD. And right before we begin shooting, make sure you have prepared a memory card that is fast enough for slow motion work. Ah uh, yes, this thing. This is very important because it's not possible to record slow motion onto a card that's not fast enough. It's a lot more important than it sounds. On the A7S and FX3, you need either a VPG 200 rated CF Express Type A card or an SD card with a speed rating of V60 or higher. We've opted to use our favorite cards for this, the G Series Tough CF Express cards. These are our absolute favorites, even outside of the show, not only because they're extra fast, but extra spicy. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend tasting these, but well, they would survive a tasting because they're extra durable as well. These have an insane speed rating of VPG 400, which is fast enough to handle the fastest frame rates at the highest resolutions on our cameras here. Now, the name of it is slow motion, so whatever it is you're shooting, there should be some interesting movement to be slowed down. It actually works best if the movement is too fast to look interesting in real time. So what does that mean? I don't know. So I've given Jay-Z honor of figuring out what exactly falls within that category. I'm ready with an invoice next time to do that and give me back my cut. 
I like that card. That is way too much powder. <laughs> Oh, God. Don't drink that! <laughs> I knew that was gonna happen. That looks ridiculous. Why? Do you sometimes wish at least one of us was like a food stylist? Or... Yep. Now, the higher you push your frame rates for slow motion, the more lines you're going to need. You'll be dealing with really fast shutter speeds because as we talked about in episode one, it should be at least twice your frame rate. So make sure you've got plenty of light to work with. You should also be mindful of lighting flicker. Many household lights can cause flicker, especially at fast shutter speeds like these. So you'll want to avoid any light sources that could be problematic. So after all those tips, we would like to end this episode by pushing these slow motion limits of the A7S III and the FX3 by stepping them down to full HD, allowing us to record SNQ as 240 frames per second. I stole your life! <laughs> Do you want a medal?